Well, what I was looking to do is just to introduce it. I'm, I'm Murray Dawson from Scott Dawson Advertising. I'm also chair of Amazing Accrington, but at heart I'm a Clayton lad that's grown up in Hindburn and just wants to do his bit to help wherever I can. In this period of lockdown, there was an opportunity, but we did not think it was appropriate to have a launch of a new arena and announce our affiliation partnership with a traditional ribbon cutting. So in the current climate of stay at home and stay safe, we've arranged a Zoom meeting. And who I've invited to the meeting is Mark Pickup, the trustee of Great Harwood Rovers. Hi, Mark. We've got Hi. Jonathan Harrison, the head teacher of Moreland Private School. We've got Sarah Brickcliffe, MP for Hyburn and Haslingdon. And we've got Miles Parkinson, leader of Hyburn Borough Council. So we're, we're very lucky to have everybody here today. We're doing safe distancing, etc. And we're doing something <coughs> new and innovative for a change. Were you just sneezing into your uh, elbow then, Mark? Hi. A bit too old, Murray. That's good. Well, what Don't I was on. keen to do is that I'm pleased to say that Sarah Brickliffe, as a current MP for Hyburn and Haslingdon, has agreed to do the virtual honours. But first, I'm keen to introduce you and just to run you through what it is we're actually launching today and what it's all about. So we will just show a quick video now of the Great Howard Rovers facility. And it was one that we took at 5.30 yesterday morning with a beautiful view of Pendle Hill in the background, etc. just in terms of the facility. So Mark, as a trustee, you've achieved an awful lot since the club's original launch in 1975 and the investment in new facilities in 2017. Could you just elaborate in terms of what you've been up to? Yeah, so Murray, like you said, um, in 1975, we were a family 40 odd years ago. Uh, we were then uh, founded by an handful of parents who were part of the local Blackburn Rovers Supporters Club. Uh, with two or three teams, uh, 20 to 30 kids, and a handful of adults who were quite dedicated and got us up and running. Uh, we played on council pitches that were adult pitches, but we put kids on them. So you can imagine eight by eight goals, uh, nine year old kids, a bit interesting. But anyhow, in recent years, uh, things have changed quite significantly. Uh, we've got the facilities we've always dreamed of, but fundamentally right now in 2020, We've got 28 football teams, a crash of four and five year olds that are the ones that are coming through for the future. Uh, we've got 300 players, 60 plus volunteers and our own dedicated facilities uh, that we're very grateful uh, for the council to have helped us with over many years. Uh, eventually we got there. We've got facilities that really uh, they're the envy of a lot of local football teams and, and we're really, really, really pleased and we know how fortunate we are to have those facilities. So you could say that things have moved on quite significantly in that period. Uh, it feels like we're managing a small end. Carry on, Mary, sorry. I was just saying that's great to hear. I thought it was opportune then to, to introduce Miles as the leader of the council because yep. I know that you were supportive of the journey as a council in terms yep. of the funding streams that came through. Could you elaborate on that? Well, of course, Murray and Mark. Mark and the group from Great Hard Rovers have had many aspirations over many years and of course some false dawns when due to viability some of the schemes didn't come off so this latest development and the aspiration what has been delivered over the last few years has come about by many uh, partnerships and organizations coming together but the crucial fact now is is that it's been delivered and more crucially now Moreland are coming forward in supporting this organization as the aspirations for Great Hard Rovers will be unlimited as they move forward. We notice only just recently the tie up with a major European football team. And of course, unfortunately, due to COVID 19, that there may be issues around that. But it's really taking the club forward. And that's a great thanks to all the volunteers in Great Harwood. It isn't just a resource for Great Harwood, but across Einburn. And one of the most important things now for society in general is to get healthy. And that is to be, you know, commended. Well, uh, I must admit my son plays football for Great Howard Rovers and it was through um, one of the friendly parents, John McNamara, he asked, could I help and look for a, a, a sponsor for the ground? And I know that I've been helpful to the one stadium in the past, um, property shop arena at Accrington Cricket Club. So we've got experience in that. And, um, you know, I was impressed in terms of the facilities. I didn't really appreciate um, the effort and the resource and the 60 volunteers and, you know, the, the work that goes on behind the scenes. So we, we stepped up to the game. And the ideal partner in our mind was, was Moreland Private School. 
who are based in, in Clitheroe, Clitheroe's only private school, and are extremely well known at a regional, national, and international level within football. I believe that they're the current ESFA champions of England, and we also thought it would make an excellent educational partner. So instead of it being um, somebody who was maybe not appropriate for youth development, for sport, we felt that we should really target a, a sponsor that could actually underpin and maybe push things on and develop and look for scouting opportunities. So I'm keen to welcome Jonathan Harrison, head teacher at Moreland School. Can you tell us a little more about the Moreland family and what you have to offer, Jonathan? Well, thanks for the introduction, Murray, and for everyone's support today. Um, I think the most important thing for me is you mentioned the word family. I think that's, you know, first of all, I'd like to start off by thanking our NHS frontline staff and all the key workers out there for supporting our local communities and, our, and the Moreland family, but also all the families within our localities. It's, uh, they're doing a terrific, terrific job for us. Um, yeah, thanks for pointing out as well that we're the Clitheroe's only private school. I think we, you know, we're celebrating our centenary this year. So 100 years of uh, providing education to the Ribble Valley and the surrounding communities. And we're very proud that we've had that heritage uh, and, and that support. I think the important thing is, as a school, it's all about academia, obviously. We, we, we pride ourselves on providing academic excellence and uh, by striving through with a very varied and dynamic curriculum. Uh, and two of the big products that we're well known for now, both, as you said, Murray regionally, nationally and internationally now, is for the ballet and for the football. I mean, this year in the ballet, the ballet um, product that we've got in the school, we've got a member of our ballet community who's been selected to represent Team GB for the ballet. In England, we've, we're now national champions and regional champions again uh, for football. Uh, I think we've won about four national titles in the last five years. Uh, so, you know, we've got a really strong offering there with the football. We've, we've got many professional players playing at the highest level within the game. Uh, two that have just signed professionally in our first two appearances at Blackburn Rovers Football Club um, and, and many other numerous clubs. We've got a, a nearly 30 players currently in the school that are actually playing at, uh, in professional academies, either Cat 1 or Cat 2 level academies. Uh, so we're doing very well on that front as well. So, you know, that, that's kind of the synopsis really of what, of what our offering is. That, that's great to hear. And um, hopefully you can see the, the, the sort of benefits and the cross-sell in terms of, of what Moreland are about and what they're offering. Um, what attracted you about the naming rights to Great Harwood Rovers, Jonathan? You know, what was the... Mm. Uh, well, I think, I mean, what a, great, what a great facility, what a great club and what a great ethos... Uh, uh, that they have there at the club. It's it's about developing young players for the future of, of sport, and you know, and it is you know, as you said, it is about fitness and, and, and raising you know that sort of obesity and, and and getting children to, to to communicate other than on an iPad on and on their phones to actually get them to talk to each other on the on the pitch and get leadership skills. It's it's essential really, and I think that you know, we we love what Great Harvard's about. We love what they're doing. We love the energy, um, and we feel that we've we, we've got an awful lot to offer the club. Um, and the club's got an awful lot to offer us and just felt it, it just it just worked really it was when we, were, when we were approached by yourself we just thought what a, what a great project to be involved in that's great well I think that's an opportune moment for me to pull Sarah in so Sarah thank you for breaking out of your busy <laughs> schedule today no problem um, you know can you tell me what sort of support for people like Great Harwood Rovers are available from the council the government of Sports England etc so I think I think everybody especially after um we come through the recovery stage what we will need to see is community um, projects being supported and um, Sports England have created the Community Emergency Fund which is aimed at helping community sport. Uh, I think there will be a lot to look at with mental health and sport is a way forward with that. Um, I've always said that the youth in Hindburn are, are very, very important and we need to create opportunities for them. And I think Great Harwood Rovers um, do that. Unfortunately, I'm not uh, a keen football player, but I, I have family members, young family members, who are really involved and it really does give them something to do and something to aspire to and something to look forward to. And I think it's, it's really important that whether it's local, national government we all support that going forward and make sure financially the funds are available so i think the sports england community fund is great there 
um, and I would be pushing that forward. So I think, I think in all aspects of government and in the community, people are willing to support this um, and look at the grants and funding that is available to do that. That's great. Well, I know I've spoken at length to Mark and um, when we spoke about the ground itself, what do we call it? And the word arena, we were keen that it was there for other sporting events. You know, it underpins the Great Harwood Show. And, um, you know, it's open to everybody in the community that wants to get up and active mm -hmm. and healthy. And you've now got the facilities, Mark, you've got the catering facilities, the educational facilities yep. that are second to none, aren't they really? You know, brand new. Yeah, we've, we've, uh, we've held a few uh, Lancashire FA courses recently uh, where they've come along and given us a dedicated uh, adults in football, first aid training, all that kind of good stuff. Um, similarly, I mean, I, I, look, I look over the place, you know, even in lockdown, I've got to keep an eye on the facility. Uh, it's always busy. There are always people stretching their legs, running around the football pitches, keeping healthy. Dog walkers, overwhelmingly responsible dog, dog walkers, I hasten to add. Uh, but it's, it's widely used. It's widely used for sure. Yeah, Thank well, you, that, that leads me nicely on to, to Jonathan. Um, you know, because in terms of, we've been planning this for maybe five months now, and with lots of um, community engagement plans up our sleeves, etc. cetera. Um, but what were you hoping to deliver? to the local community in the future. There's a lot more than just football, isn't there, in terms of your support? Well, there is. I think we go to football. I mean, you know, we're the official educational partners of Blackburn Rovers Football Club, and we've got unique relationships with near enough all the local clubs in our community. We're the Centre for East Lancashire Training Centre. is also based at Moreland School. And I think that, you know, we've, we've got great access to UA for A and B licensed coaches. So we've also got the, the, the well-known Charlie Jackson as well, who's our head coach and his current technical skills development coach for City. He's worked at United, worked at Ajax. Um, so again, you know, I think we could offer some really good CPD opportunities for, for Great Harwood's coaching staff. So we could, we could you know, we could do Excellent. those sort of sessions, offer them some online support as well with some of our coaching sessions that we have. We've got massive international links as well. Um, so we've, we've, we've just been over to Kenya um, and the Kenyan national team want to come across. So we can involve Brett Harwood with, with the Kenyan national, national team. Uh, as I say, the, the training, the unique training centre that we have at Moorlands, we can deliver that down to the players at Great Harwood and give them that opportunity to excel in the sport. Um, I just think there's so many opportunities. We'd, like to, we'd love to use our facilities maybe to host some local matches. Um, we've got quite a few, as I say, professional players that we could bring into Great Harwood to meet the players and actually talk to them what's the life of a professional football player like. Um, so there's lots of collaborations I see going forward and, you know, and, and in, in other sporting areas as well. So I think that um, it would just be good to further discussions with, with Great Harwood and, and to see what their aspirations are, what their strategic vision is going Perfect. forward and, and how we can interact with that and how we can support them in any way we can. Yeah, excellent. No, that's good. And I know that we had planned some victory in Europe events and I know that they've been cancelled now, Mark. And, um, you know, we were hoping yeah. to have a flyover that we're sponsoring. So <laughs> there'll be lots of opportunities in the future to, to do charity fundraisers or engage the community. And I know Miles is um, sat quite proudly in front of the Accrington Stanley shirt when Hamburg Borough Council <laughs> sponsored them. So um, fair play, Miles. Keep Accrington Stanley in there, you know. Well, um, it's it's actually, it, it was... It was the year actually when the former leader of the council uh, sponsored uh, Accrington Stanley and that was Sarah's father, Peter Brickley. <laughs> so it's uh, a tribute to both political parties how we supported Accrington Stanley. No, we, we're enjoying the collaboration at the moment in the challenging times. So I've just got two points now. One, Mark, is do you have a dream for the club moving on from here? If you had one wish, what's the wish? What can Miles well, and Sarah help with? First of all, like I said, we're incredibly grateful for what we've got. But again, that shouldn't stop us from wanting to make it even better. Uh, so there's nothing we can do about the weather in our area, that's for sure. There's not a lot we can do about thousands, hundreds of kids wanting to play football, apart from accommodate them wherever possible. But the one thing that we're struggling with right now, from a football perspective, let's get into you know, a bit of context here. This isn't the end of the world. It's not the biggest issue around. But right now, if we had additional facilities, we would be able to use them. Uh, so, for instance, we have one large football pitch that we used for out. We've got four football pitches for all different formats, five a side, seven, nine, and 11. But the adult football pitch that we've got, we've got 14 teams that want to play on that pitch. If we had a synthetic pitch, a 3G pitch, uh, that, that was available to us, 
we could use that for all sorts of activities, training, matches, community activities uh, throughout the year. Uh, and like everybody was susceptible to the weather. I mean, there's, you know, we're in East Lancashire. It's notorious, isn't it, for uh, inclement weather. But a 3G pitch would be absolutely magnificent. As we stand right now, um, Miles, please take this the right way. Like I said, we're very grateful. Uh, we, we have to go out to the borough uh, every week to hire 3G pitches in Blackburn, Burnley and Ribble Valley. Uh, I know the council are doing everything they can to try and improve that lot. But if we had a 3G pitch, it would be widely used and massively. It would be a massive boost, massive boost. And that would really help us tremendously. Yeah, Thank you. We're also looking at that for potentially for hockey, for other sports. Netball, multi-sport. Hockey, it's a sports football. pitch, isn't it? Yep. So it's a multi-venue. And equally, if the yep. Great Howard shows on, then there's a hard um, surface that they can use yep. that won't be weather-driven. So the, I yep. think there's good opportunities there. But I'm uh, keen to move on to the last part of this. And it's the... Um, Sarah, we're asking you to do the honours and it's a virtual ribbon cutting. So I was keen if you could just give us some words and then we'll script <laughs> in the photograph afterwards. afterwards. Um, if you could just lead it on from there. Well, obviously there's so much hard work gone into this and uh, Mark, um, what you've achieved so far is unbelievable. And I know that this partnership between Warland School and Great Harwood Rovers will work well and it will benefit so many people in the community, uh, not just young people, adults alike. And I'm really, really keen to see how this works go, going forward and me and Miles supporting you collaboratively together um, going forward with this. Once we are able to, it would be great to come and visit um, and do this uh, off laptops as well um, but I've done a lot of virtual firsts at the moment so this ribbon cutting will be another um, so yeah I'm really looking forward to being able to meet um, and see how working together we can support the community uh, together so but yeah well congratulations and let's see what what more we can achieve right, then we're on I to don't the know ribbon. how I virtually ribbon cut uh, Anyway, we'll shoot off then. Okay, thanks everybody. Lovely to see you. Cheers, folks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye now. Entertainment, Miles.